it's Thursday afternoon, 4 o'clock. That means it's time for another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I'm your co-host and very happy to have my co-host back again, Justine Espiritu. Thank you so much for coming back from wherever you've been. <laughs> Don't ever leave me again. Um, we are at Hawaii Food and Farmers Series here to talk to Hawaii's farmers, chefs, and foodies that are making an impact in Hawaii's local food uh, system. But every now and then we like to expand beyond the boundaries of Hawaii, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, if you want to go ahead and join the conversation, you're able to tweet in at, at ThinkTechHI, and you can actually even call in now with our hotline number right here listed at the bottom of the screen. So we really would like to hear from you. Please join the conversation. And with that, I'm just going to hand it over to Justine, and I'm just going to hang out for the rest of the show. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for that introduction. I'm really happy to be back. And I was in California, absolutely not on vacation, doing mm -hmm. a lot of work and research. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to say I found a great couple that I wanted to feature on the show. They are living in San Francisco. Their name is Rika and Chris Kwan. And so they are with Churn Urban Creamery. So um, to give a little bit of background, they'll get into it. We have them actually with us on Skype, but before we bring them on, yeah. uh, Rika is, um, has a background in design and was inspired to take a permaculture course, which led uh, her to start an urban farm in her backyard in San Francisco and motivated to kind of take things further. They brainstormed some products that as a family unit, they could grow ingredients for and then uh, start a business. And so they came to ice cream. And so really excited. Uh, I was able to join them at a pop-up event, pop event in San Francisco. And I was able to take uh, a brief interview with them so we're going to play that now. Oh, right. And then okay, we're so gonna, what's kind of interesting about ice cream to me is that most people gonna have, have their them. favorites and that are kind of classics, like yeah. vanilla or mint chocolate chip. So if you can kind of talk about the, if you are using the products you're growing in the backyard, how does, what kind of flavors do you guys have and how does seasonality kind of affect that? Yeah. We have a lot of regulars that come, uh, regular flavors we that we like? do, so creme brulee, roast banana pudding and uh, deep dark cocoa and some of those are not necessarily grown by us because they can't be like bananas don't grow in san francisco unfortunately but those are the flavors that get people here and then once they get them here i have them try more seasonal flavors like right now we have farmers blueberry swirl so blueberry season is about to be over and this is probably the last time we're serving this uh, also, yeah. strawberries and cream is seasonal. There's other flavors like plums that I'm using. Uh, mint does not have a season, so that's something that I use all the time. Okay, and then so there are some flavors that are throughout the year, yes. and some just are periodic. And so I'm kind of curious of are most of your customers friends and locals, or do you have a lot of tourists that, yeah, what's kind of that ratio, Chris? I think that most of our customers are locals. Uh -huh. um, touristy, no, because the area we serve at most of the time, not that many tourists come here. Um, mm -hmm. Unless they have to be with friends. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we serve a lot of people in our neighborhood and we have a lot of people who come back and eat our ice cream. I love our ice cream. Do you see um, educating people at all? Have you, has your business and your product been able to educate them on kind of seasonality and what grows in San Francisco? If you guys are kind of always doing this in urban settings, what's kind of been the reaction when people are eating ice cream with um, different spices or what's another unique kind of experimental one you guys have used? People are really surprised that we can grow food here in San Francisco, which is which is not, not really so far-fetched because we have soil, we have sun, um, just a little bit of amendment will do some good and um, we play with with a lot of herbal flavors that do really well here and rosemary olive oil is one that does really well and this is going to show you how that looks like yeah and how did you how did you come up with that because i would never think to pair those together i like to play with savories so um, rosemary olive oil is uh usually something used with chicken and bread and i like to put a twist in it and make it sweet so People have been really reacting to it. Some people hate it. Some people love it. <laughs> it is dairy-free as well. It's dairy-free, so probably not cooking a cream-based. 
Yeah, and it took a little bit to perfect it, and uh, now we think we found the exact recipe to make it as best as it could be. Yeah, and rosemary is grown in our own backyard, and olive oil is from Central California, so also very local. Okay. Um, so what are some of the challenges as a small local food enterprise here in San Francisco? There's challenges for any entrepreneur, but especially with what we do. Um, growing your own food and selling it to the masses comes with uh, some issues. There are governmental agencies that support that in San Francisco, but there are governmental agencies that don't support that. So this is gonna be a conversation that we're gonna be having the next few years and may come up with some issues, but we're ready to face them because we feel very strongly about helping people learn about growing your own food and growing your own ingredients. I think just saying they love like to grow their own food and they want, people, well, they want local foods. So uh -huh. I think that's another big thing that's going on right now, this day and age. Yeah. So, do, you, do these kind of questions come up, um, these ideas of local food or maybe these policies of helping small businesses or small farmers, are you guys having those conversations with customers? Yes, all the time. People have so many questions about permits and what's allowed, what's not allowed, and how long we've been growing. So, And my favorite conversations to have are people that are already growing food in the neighborhood and what they're growing and comparing notes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's great because if it was just a normal ice cream kind of stand, those things don't kind of come up. So it's awesome that you guys have this product and this business to kind of start those conversations with yeah. people. And if you can kind of talk about, as a startup, where you guys are, are putting out your product to folks, how do you guys get it out there? And We do pop-ups right now. Uh, we don't sell any, any stores yet. Uh, that's a different kind of permit as well. Um, we do pack pints, we do deliver. Uh, so that's kind of, yeah. Everything's very small batch, so I make it that week and I sell it that week. And if I was to sell it to a store, that would I couldn't make it small batch and I couldn't make it more personal and it would be it would be a whole different product. It would yeah. get watered down, um, seasonality would just go down the drain. So this is the best way for me to share this love of growing and farming seasonality with the people by staying small. Yeah. And if you want to mention some of the the other again, just the local other local producers that you're working with yeah, with um, your ice cream? Little City Gardens is a place that I volunteer at and I hold very dear to my heart and they supply our mint yeah. and they're the only uh, the only commercial farm in San Francisco and also we get all our milk and cream from uh, Petaluma so clover cream and Strauss, Strauss milk yeah. And um, what else? Our we go to a lot of farmers markets farmers there, markets. Central Valley as well. Yeah. You know, so we get a lot of our fruits there that we can grow. That are still growing in our yard. Okay, um, cool. What else? Uh, the strawberries are from Watsonville. They're from Rodriguez Farms. Uh, we find yeah, them at the, no, super, at the uh, farmers markets. We have a good relationship with them. And. A lot of people have been reaching out to us, you know, so I think the more connection we find, the easier it'll be for us. So get more yeah, then people start finding yeah, you guys and reaching out you to know, you. Lemons, we do lemon. We have a lot of lemons at, as well. Lemon trees are all over the place, you know, so. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, it's just great to see, you know, what comes from just starting your own garden and where people take it. So yeah. super exciting to see what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yay, so that was sort of a fun, impromptu interview. Cool and video. Yeah, thanks. Practicing my videography yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're actually Skyping uh, Chris and Rika in um, from San Francisco to kind of follow up on some of those things we touched upon. So welcome, our first Skype experience. Yeah, hi, guys. <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. So let's Thank kind of... Thank you. Thanks. So let's kind of start with how you guys, I mean... How do you guys describe your product and kind of distinguish it from just generic ice cream? And, you know, what do you kind of share that kind of explains why your product is unique? Uh, so we make small batch ice cream, uh, farm fresh, and we sell at pop-ups. Pop-ups are mostly on weekends and sometimes on weekdays. Uh, and we also deliver straight to your door. Um, some of the most popular flavors we have are creme brulee and roasted banana pudding which are fan favorites. Some Sounds unique delicious. flavors we have, rosemary olive oil, which is dairy-free, lemon thyme, dairy-free as well. And we do have a couple of special other ones, which are uh, chai chocolate cardamom. Very unique. 
Yeah, and so you guys completely, is it, Rika, are you just making up these flavors or is this a collaborative part, the, the recipes? Um, I'm the creative half. So a lot of the flavors are from my noggin, um, but Chris and I do a lot of research together. So he gives me input on what flavors he likes and what, um, what other ingredients I can put in there. Rika, you mentioned that you have a designer background. Chris, I didn't hear, what was your background? I'm a travel agent. Oh, okay. And so it's interesting, Rika, you're talking about that designer perspective. That's a new thing that, um, I guess we, with some of the farms that we work with, we're starting to think more about marketing and branding and really seeing the importance with that. So that's interesting with you is kind of having that creative background, that designer background, and now kind of coming back in and creating this unique niche product. How do you think that has helped you and do you think that could be useful for, for other farms that you're working with? Yeah, well, I have 10 years in fashion and I know about retail and I know about uh, consumer thinking and strategies to sell to consumers. And I think you have to think at what your consumer likes, um, aesthetics, see what's trendy out there and everything from your marketing along to your ingredients and your product have to abide by those rules. Cool. So let's get into, okay, can you uh, explain or kind of describe a beach cottage urban farm? It's kind of like two different enterprises you're running here. So if you could talk a little bit about the farm, what you guys have growing there in general, and then specifically what you're growing for the ice cream. Yeah, so beach cottage urban farm is our own backyard. So we live in the Sunset District of San Francisco, and uh, our home is about 300 square feet. And the backyard is 1,500 square feet. Oh, wow. So it's, it's all backyard. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we call it Beach Cottage Urban Farm. Okay. So you can imagine the soil is very sandy. Mm. So there we grow for the business a lot of herbs like rosemary, thyme, mint. And um, we've also put in some fruit trees like figs, pomegranates, and plums. And then, but some of the fruit trees, though, since you haven't been able, have you, have you had any harvest from those that go into the, the ice cream yet? Or is that um, in the... Yeah, the, the fruit future? trees are still in the very young stage, mm -hmm. so they're not fruiting quite yet. And we put actually more fruit trees in our extension farm, which is in a ranch in Pacifica, California. And the soil there is much better for fruit trees as well. Okay, and then so in addition to what you're growing, I'm not even sure what other ingredients go into ice cream. So I'm curious of, you mentioned some in the, in the, in the video, uh, some ingredients you get from an outside source. And I'm curious to kind of hear your, your criteria of who and where you source from. So we get strawberries from Rodriguez Farms, uh, home is based in Watsonville, California. We also get blueberries from Triple Delight Berry Farm, which is, they're based in Fresno. Can you give us California. a little idea of the, that distance from you guys? Both of those farms are under 200 miles okay. from San Francisco. And then are they um, delivering to you guys directly? How, how do you actually get those ingredients? No. No, I actually go to the farmer's market myself. Oh, okay. And I build relationships with those farmers and the people that work for the farmers. And um, I think that's a really important part of what I do is the relationships. So then are you like putting your order in uh, ahead of time before the farmer's markets and then they're bringing that to you at the, the market? Is that how No, it that would probably be smarter. <laughs> but I, I actually like going to the farmer's market. I like to touch and feel and smell the fruit. And I like to be, um, I like to create the flavors from what I see from the farmer's market. Oh, okay. So I don't exactly have an idea of what I'm getting sometimes. Okay. I just go there and see what's in season. Okay. Well, that's interesting, especially for us. One of the major issues is this whole distribution issue. And, you know, if farmers are delivering to you or you need to go and drive all those kind of like food miles. So it's great that you've kind of cut that. If your orders are small enough that you know that your supply is going to be there, that cuts out that whole kind of extra miles that you guys might be 
driving. So then again, do you, how do you guys, oh, well, I guess you're just going to the farmer's market. So do you have any other criteria? I mean, is that the criteria that you're only going to work with people you find at the farmer's market? Or Chris, you mentioned in the video that some people kind of reach out to you guys. They do. We work in a commercial kitchen uh, where we're currently at right now. And we've made relationships with people. And they've introduced us to people that can provide us with ingredients as well. Wow, that's the amazing beauty of these like commercial spaces or mm -hmm. kind of like community hubs. Well, we're going to take yeah. a quick break, a quick one minute break, and then we're going to get right back into it. So we'll I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm the host of Research in Manoa, Mondays from 12 to 1 on thinktechhawaii.com. Take a look at us and learn about uh, geophysics, learn about planetology, learn about the ocean and earth sciences at UH Manoa. You'll really enjoy it. So come around, we'll see you then. Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. Um, we are here to show you news, issues and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Aloha and welcome back to your favorite part of your Thursday afternoon, Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host, Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Hi. Johnson. Today we have Rika and Chris from churn urban creamery skyping in from san francisco skyping going across in. the ocean mm. thank you guys for joining us yeah guys so <laughs> we were right before we went off to the break you kind of mentioned uh you've made a lot of or some connections from the commercial kitchen you guys work out of so i'm a little bit curious too of um where that commercial kitchen is in comparison to where you guys are located and if you could um just throw out a couple of the the folks you have met there, if that, if they're fruit farmer, if they're farmers, or they value added producers, if you can kind of explain that, because I'm a little curious. Yeah, the commercial farm. I'm sorry, the commercial kitchen is um, within ten miles of our home, mm. so it's in Daly City. It's right next to San Francisco, mm. and we have a lot of connections there. Like Chris said, one of them is a man that makes jams and marmalades. And he's the one that's really led me to a lot of the farmers that I have relationships with okay. now. Yeah. Cool. cool, that's awesome. Well, yeah, Sounds it's like interesting because we're, you know, Justine are actually working on a similar project. I don't know if she told you about that, but we're working out of a food hub here in Honolulu. And interestingly enough, so the whole thing is I run a company called Oahu Fresh. We do like CSA and farm distribution type stuff. Uh, and we're trying to bring in other tenants and to share um, the space as well. And interestingly enough, somebody, showed up today from cold fry and uh they're actually an ice cream uh company as well using local ingredients so quite uh ironic that that kind of happened today and then meeting <laughs> you guys today on skype so yeah very curious to hear more about um just how that community around local food is working because that's something we're trying to develop so that sounds like something you guys have already doing so that, that's fantastic do you Thank know you. we're always learning though Awesome. And how long have you guys been in op uh, doing this again? The whole churn? How long has churn been around? Uh, we've been around since April 2nd. A little bit longer than that, but we launched on April 2nd. A April of 2nd? This of this year. Of this year? Oh, oh this year. Wow. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Brand new. So very new. Yeah. Um, really quickly, does this ice cream folks, the cold fry, do they have vegan options? I don't know. I just met them. Actually, I didn't really even meet them today. Lauren was talking to them, so I have a lot to find out about them because I was extremely impressed with uh, Churn. You guys at each of your events actually have a vegan option. Is that correct? Yes. And that came about- We always have one or two. Did you, all, did you initiate that from the beginning or is that kind of based on customer feedback? No, always from the beginning. Mm. We always like to eat healthy and I'm not sure if vegan ice cream is that healthy, <laughs> but it's a little <laughs> bit less fat. Our ice cream is healthy. I eat it every night. <laughs> yeah. And you guys look great. <laughs> and, so, and so again, Thank for the, the vegan options, it's it's coconut coconut milk, coconut juice. What's the what's the yeah, ingredients? Coconut milk and coconut cream. And we have some even uh, water based flavors like 
the sorbets are water based okay. and our deep dark cocoa, mm. which is um, all chocolate and water. Yum. What about that bacon one? Did you guys make that for Erica? <laughs> what? Bacon ice cream? <laughs> what is it? Praline bacon? Praline bacon. Yeah, that was inspired by a trip to New Orleans. Okay. They love bacon over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and I'm curious too, so you guys really have this, it's, I think it's more than a garden. It really is kind of is an urban farm back there in your backyard. But when I think of an urban farm too, I think of animals. And you guys don't have animals, but you have relationship with animals at this spot in Petaluma. Could you kind of talk about that? It's mm -hmm. the, your relationship with the, it's a dairy farm or explain? Yeah, so we source all our dairy from Petaluma. There's two companies there, Clover Cream and uh, Strauss Creamery. And the animals you're speaking of are cows, obviously. And um, at our extension in the ranch in Pacifica, we also have, uh, it's, it's the pets of the area, but it's, there's a pig and a goat, and there's lots of horses. Okay, is that where you get your bacon from? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I think they said they were no. pets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay. okay. So, no. <laughs> Sorry. Never. Okay. And then, the, so those dairy farms, the, the, dairies, the dairies you're talking about are not particularly, it's not necessarily like a small dairy. It's just like the dairy that's there. Yeah, it's a local dairy farm, both of those farms, and they're very popular in San Francisco, and a lot of food businesses use them, actually. Okay. So, Christian, we can talk a little bit about how, how have your customers, I guess uh, you're going out to different pop-ups and doing these events, how has the reaction been? Are, I mean, are people just lining up, like, outside the door? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Is it, what's... What's, how are you guys feeling right now? Because you've just been in business now for, what, four months? Not even. So, I mean, how, how do you guys feel? It's pretty exciting. Um, sometimes, the people come in waves. You know, depending on where we're at, where we're set up, uh, if we're inside or outside, and, you know, people see us. Or we do have a lot of regulars. Um, people order for delivery, which is great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's been really fun and tiring. Okay. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, with the delivery element, is that something that was always in place, or is that something you guys came up with? You know, if you if you have an event that you don't sell out at, and then that's a happy looking whole, customer. <laughs> how did the yeah, how did the like door? I mean, basically, it's almost like a ice cream CSA. How did that idea kind of come up? Yes, delivery is really popular in San Francisco mm. and New York, and any kind of food is delivered. So I thought, why not ice cream? Okay, well, so I mean, we personally eat ice cream in the evenings, watching Netflix or and so on, and I think it would be perfect for that. Uh huh. Cool. Um, so, if you guys have any thoughts about like actually like packaging it and then eventually having this available in stores, is that something that you guys have thought about, spoken about? Is that even possible with the kind of product that you're doing? People are always asking us this question. Um, how do I put it? it? The product changes once you make it in a really mass quantities. Mm. And I think that's why people like us. It's, it tastes different because it's made that week, made in very small batches. And it, I think it tastes better that way. So no, to, to answer your question. <laughs> Maybe in five to ten years, but, but the next five years, this is how we're going to be doing it. We'll okay. keep pushing our cart everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah, your cart. I'm just trying to get some of this ice cream here in Hawaii. That, that's, that's and all then it is I'm worth asking. noting the, the packaging you do use for your deliveries, <coughs> that is, um, what's the word? Is it compostable or biodegradable? Yes. Which one? Yeah, Which compostable one? Okay. everything. And we actually started using real spoons for our semi-permanent pop-up at La on Trading Post, just because we can wash those and we're not um, collecting more trash. Right. So sustainability is very so important. So you're, you're to us. using silverware instead of disposable utensils. Exactly. I, I, I actually, and people are actually really reacting to that. I accidentally stole one actually when the last time I saw you guys. <laughs> mm. I, I like walked off into like the back. art gallery with it. I think Erica has it. <laughs> um, and so I'm curious: is this the process you guys do? Is it more difficult than large than your generic ice cream, and is it more expensive as a business? If you can kind of 
take this moment to like elaborate to viewers the work that goes into mm. like small yeah. batch. Does does small batch mean small effort or? Oh no, <laughs> small batch actually means more work. Mm. Okay, it's more time consuming. Um, so I make a batter day one and let it sit overnight, and then day two I will churn it. So every batter takes two days. So you're you're and hand after that, churning. We're freeze. Just like churning we're, in a we're big. We're not hand churning. Oh okay. It is 2016. <laughs> 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 we have <laughs> yeah. It's a small batch machine, uh, and the capacity is up to eight quarts. I get the confused with our Amish guests that we had. <laughs> <last laughs> Amish week. ice cream guests. <laughs> so then, if if you're doing that for like five <coughs> different flavors for your event on Saturday, that means you're doing that two days for each of the five different flavors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I focus on the batters. I'll make them a day prior, and then the next day, Chris comes and he'll churn it. And then I make more batter while he's churning. Okay, cool. Dream team. Well, it looks like we just <laughs> yes. have a minute mm -hmm. left. Um, really quickly, do you want to talk about your next event coming up? Yeah, so this Saturday we'll be at Public Bikes on Hay Street for the Paws and Pedals event. Paw so there'll be dogs there. Whoa. And you can meet Chomper Sikorgi, <laughs> dog portraits, <laughs> and a raffle to benefit local animal sh shelters. I love you guys' pictures. That and is our really dog, cool. too. That's our dog, Bailey. No way. <laughs> Happiest dog ever. And then ever. on Sunday, we'll be at Four Barrel at the alley from 11 to 3. We'll be doing affogados and what, our ice cream as what's well. What's affogados? Affogados are ice cream with espresso. Oh. oh wow. That sounds good. good. Mm. All right. Well, we're a little disappointed that you couldn't be in the studio because usually now our guests like bring their treats. So <laughs> whatever, but um, all right. Well, I think we're out of time. time. Thank you so much for letting us experiment with the Skype with you. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks, and guys. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank for you. Having us. Mahalo. Uh -huh.